Hi, my name is Dr. Emily Spickle, functional podiatrist and medical advisor for StepStrong. Today, I want to speak to you about the difference between acute and chronic plantar fasciitis or plantar fascial symptoms. Now, one of the biggest differentiators between acute and chronic plantar heel pain is going to be time or duration of symptoms. Classically, acute plantar fasciitis is going to present for a few days, weeks, or even a couple months. As soon as those symptoms start to persist and you go over six months in duration, we now switch to be more of a chronic plantar fasciitis or actually fasciosis. Now, what also might fall under chronic plantar fasciosis is the type of plantar fascial symptoms where they appear and then they resolve and then they reappear and they resolve and they continue to do this waxing and waning presentation for a myriad of months or actually several years. Now, as soon as you understand the type of plantar fascial symptoms that you're experiencing, this can help to understand the treatment protocol and typically how you will respond to that protocol. Now, majority of acute plantar fasciitis will respond positively to conservative treatment, including immobilization, arch supports, doing something for inflammation from icing, oral anti-inflammatories to systemic enzymes, doing something from a mild fascial release or plantar fascia stretching, and then of course rest or removing whatever the triggering symptoms were. Now again, a majority of acute plantar fasciitis will respond positively to those conservative treatments. Now, if your plantar fasciitis is not responding to conservative treatment, you actually want to reassess and see if you actually may have chronic plantar fascial symptoms. Now, under chronic plantar fasciitis or fasciosis, what is typically presenting is degeneration, thickening of the tissue, and even possibly a tear. Now, this degeneration and thickening of the tissue is because of the repeated duration of symptoms or the chronic inflammation that is causing collagen changes to persist. Now, in the case of ruling out chronic plantar fasciosis, I typically will recommend either an MRI or an ultrasound to assess the thickness of the tissue or, again, to rule out any sort of tear. Now, in the case of a chronic plantar fasciosis, you want to be thinking about treatment protocols that are going to support the regeneration of that thickened tissue or possibly regeneration of the partial tear. This is where you can look at again, systemic enzymes because of this fibrolytic benefit that they provide, but you could also look at PRP and other regenerative injections. This is where there's also different procedures such as 10X, Topaz, Tenjet, and a lot of these fall under regenerative medicine. If you are dealing with chronic or acute plantar fasciitis and not responding to the treatment protocol that you've been given, you want to step back and assess which type of plantar fascial symptoms you are actually experiencing. If you are not responding to any of your plantar fascial treatments and you have not had any sort of imaging, I recommend speaking to your local podiatrist to rule out that chronic plantar fasciosis through different types of imaging. To learn more about different types of plantar fasciitis and the treatment protocols, and to learn more about systemic enzymes, please go to stepstrong.com. And to learn more about how I treat patients, please go to dremilysplickle.com.